Regular cleaning of your transmission and your full drivetrain is the key to it working smoothly and lasting a long time. It's also a really good opportunity for you to inspect those chain links, make sure they're in good condition, and of course, make sure there's no damage to your sprockets. Here's how you get it done quickly and efficiently. So our first step is to assess the condition of your bike. If your bike, like mine, isn't actually that dirty, then you don't really need to give your bike a full clean. You can just concentrate on all the stuff that works down here. Of course, if you have been riding in muddy or gritty conditions, maybe with sand and stuff, then perhaps you do need to look at washing your bike fully, because that sand and grit can really work its way into the chain and make things quite hard to deal with. Now we use WD-40 products here, they obviously make a bike cleaner which is great for us because this particular one is friendly on paintwork and I can get it near my disc brakes without having to worry about any sort of contamination. Of course there are lots of different bike cleaners out there so just make sure when you're using whatever bike cleaner you use to check that it is safe to get near your brakes and if it's not obviously don't get it anywhere near them. Now when your bike is sort of clean enough to start working on that transmission the best thing really is a dedicated chain degreaser like this one. Now it is really important to note that with a spray degreaser like this, it's very easy to overspray and get it near your disc rotors, or also just near stuff like the bearings around your bottom bracket. It's actually quite powerful stuff, so you really don't want to do that. So to start with, I'm just going to put a bit of shop towel and wedge it around the disc rotor at the rear there, just to make sure I don't get anywhere near that. And I'm only going to spray around the chain, or I'm going to spray it onto the actual towel and put it where I need it. And now to work the degreaser into the chain and the sprockets and that, you're going to need some sort of selection of brushes. There's various different ones out there on the market and all for slightly different things. These ones with like the bendy wire in the middle, they're actually best for just getting into nooks and crannies, particular places, maybe behind the hub, stuff like that. So that's not necessarily the best one for this job. Now you might have seen some brushes this sort of shape before. They've got a scraper for getting in between the sprockets and the cassette, they're really, really useful. And of course these bristles are really quite tough, so they're ideal for scraping all that grime out between those chain links. And of course there are three particular places you want to actually be working the degreaser in. There's the cassette area itself, which obviously needs to be cleaned, so it's a good idea to have your chain about halfway up that cassette so you can get access to the smaller sprockets and those large sprockets. Obviously I've protected my disc rotor in the background, so just take care if you are spraying in that area. The next one is the upper side of the chain. The best place to spray that is actually on the lower part of the chain here as it runs towards the jockey wheels. It's a nice easy access place. You can reach this whilst you're cycling the, the cranks backwards so you can get a good amount in there. And then for the bottom bracket area and around the actual cranks and chain ring, you don't really want to be spraying directly in that area because of bearings, whether it be your main pivot bearing or the actual bottom bracket bearings itself. So you want to be spraying onto a rag or spraying directly onto the brush that you're using to clean it. So also the rear derailleur itself can house quite a lot of muck, especially around the guide and the jockey wheels there. So you really want to make sure you start picking out some of those leaves and all the other stuff that accumulates there because it does add friction. And of course, holding onto that stuff's not good because it does pass through the chain as well. So make sure you give them a bit of love and make sure that you give them a decent clean. Another point to mention is to not spray degreaser directly at those jockey wheels or the guide wheels. Some of them, like in this case, they've got little bearings inside. Some don't, they're more like bushes or plates and spacers. So not as bad, but the ones with bearings, you will be flushing out all that grease, which isn't a good thing, and it does mean you're going to have to give them a bit of a service. So you're best off just grinding away at the, the muck that's in there with a firm brush or the uh, sharp end of this plastic sort of cassette scraping brush. Now, obviously, the key to cleaning your transmission is a bit of elbow grease. You've got to really get in there and be systematic with your approach. You've got to work it round. Sometimes you have to rinse off a bit and then go back to it again. Now, these little fellas are really helpful sometimes. There's a chain bath, you fill them up with degreaser liquid, and there's a series of rollers on the inside there that when you pass the chain back through there, it does a really good job. But they do use a fair bit of degreaser, so if you're gonna use these, make sure the chain is absolutely filthy and it's really worthwhile using it. In this case, I didn't need too much degreaser, so the spray stuff is perfect for this job, with a little bit of elbow grease just to get into the actual links and get behind the chainring teeth and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so I'm fairly happy with that. The jockey wheel and the guide wheels both look clean there. The chain is looking clean, so is the chainring, and the cassette looks great, actually. So it's time to just give it a rinse off, make sure there's no more degreaser hanging around. You don't want it to work its way into bearings like the bottom bracket or the main pivot, or even a chainstay pivot here. 
make sure it's nice and clean and then we'll give it a bit of a dry down or leave it to drip dry and then we'll get it up into the workshop and make sure it's fully lubricated and is, everything is in good condition. Okay, so now we've got the bike inside, giving it a quick wipe down so it's not too wet. Now it's just a bit of fine detailing and obviously inspection at the same time. So what you're looking for are any sort of chain plate that might have sort of started separating because that's the key to a snapped chain. Of course, in each chain, you've got the outer plates, the inner plates, the rollers and the pins that go through them. And if those pins aren't connecting properly to those outer plates, when you pedal hard, your chain will snap at some point. So just, it's always a good idea just to focus on one area of the chain, watch the chain go by and just inspect it a good place to start is that master link, follow all the way around one full revolution. So I'm just having a look, making sure all those chain links look the same and there's nothing out of ordinary there. No pins poking through, no sort of damage, no cracks on those rollers either. So you do want to check upper and lower, do it the same way. So happy with that, I'm just going to check the upper side as well. looking pretty good to me. Now, when you're looking at these rollers, make sure you can't see any cracks because of course, if there is a crack, that's the time you're gonna get some sort of damage occur like a chain break. Now, something to note with those rollers is they should be fairly free flowing. The whole point of them is they rotate on their own and lubricant also adds to that. If they don't rotate, then your chain simply will not work as smoothly. Now, as you're working through the chain, you're gonna find a few areas that you maybe missed when you were going through it with the degreaser outside. So you obviously wanna make sure that that stuff does come off. And a nice little tip for that is spray a little bit of WD-40 on a rag. Um, it's better to spray it on the rag than directly onto the chain in this case, because it, obviously you can apply it to the exact area you need to, and it's not gonna actually soak into the chain as much. Make sure you wipe it off afterwards because you don't want it to affect the lubricant you're gonna put on afterwards. That's pretty good. That looks like almost a brand new chain, in fact. Now, one of the reasons you should be inspecting your bike when you're cleaning it and not just hosing it down and leaving it to dry is that you find little minor niggles and problems that can later lead into bigger ones. Although it's not a biggie here, my cable end cap has come off and the cable is all frayed, so it's a bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna try and twiddle this round as best as I can and I'm just gonna trim the end of it and put a fresh end cap back on there to make sure it doesn't get any worse. Okay, so with the chain fully clean, it's running nice and smoothly. The only thing left to do is, of course, lubricate it. Now, you've got a few options here, and now this does depend on where you're riding and the time of year that you're actually doing this. In the UK, I tend to have a dry lube and a wet lube and also a spray lube for various different reasons. If I'm on a day out with my bike in the back of the car, I'll carry a spray lube with me because I can run it through the whole transmission. It also acts as a bit of a water displacer as well. So it's kind of like a, well, it's a multi-use product. So it's really useful for that. However, it's not as sparing as using a dedicated chain lube. So you're gonna use more of this by just spraying it on. So with chain lubes, you get two types. You get a wet lube and a dry lube. Now the wet lube, self-explanatory, is a thick, wet lubricant designed for use in adverse, like so wet, grimy conditions. The idea is it's quite thick, so as well as penetrating into those rollers and on, in, on the inside of those links to do its job, you actually get a bit of a coating on the chain that helps keep water at bay and helps keep that lubricant in place. Now the disadvantage of a wet lubricant, the exact point of keeping the lubricant on the chain can also attract dust and other stuff that can wear out your chain. So you don't really want to be using this in dry conditions, hence having a dry lubricant. Now a dry lubricant is aimed at using in dry conditions and it's still a wet lubricant when you apply it to the chain. But the idea is it's a wet lubricant and the wet stuff in it is literally just a carrier to get those lubricating particles into the chain. Now, because it's summertime, I'm gonna apply a dry lubricant because I don't wanna attract any of that sort of excess dust and stuff to my chain. Now, you wanna make sure you apply it to the inside of the chain links. Now, you often see people applying chain lube to the top side here by the cassette, but all it does is put loads of lubricant all over your cassette, and actually, although it does go into the chain, it's doing the wrong side of it. You really want it on that inside to help get it in the right place. So I'm just gonna cycle it backwards, holding a rag underneath there just to catch any excess. It's gone into the right places. Now, it's also important to note that you wanna just leave this for a minute, especially with the dry lube. So a wet lube, obviously it stays wet, so you might wanna just immediately wipe away if you've got a massive excess of it. But the dry lube, actually, it uses that wet stuff as a vessel to get those sort of lubricating particles into the right place. So if you can, just leave it a minute or so, 
make sure it works this way in and then you can wipe up the excess. Now another handy thing with dry lube is it's actually really good on the pivots on the rear mech because of the fact that it stays dry and has its own little film to it. So it's really good to just apply some to that parallelogram, give it a bit of movement just to make sure it works this way in and again leave it and then give it a wipe down afterwards. Now finally there's a couple of other things you should know about chains and lubricating them. Some people often want to ask how much lube should they use and my advice is just enough to coat the chain. You don't want to use too much because A, it's going to be a waste and B, you can end up wiping some of that off anyway and C, it's obviously going to attract too much sort of debris, mud, muck, all the stuff that wears it. So in my opinion, you definitely want to do little and often. So just pay attention to what's going on in your transmission, apply what you need, you'll get more out of your lube, you'll get more out of your drivetrain. But what you don't want to do is just keep putting more lube on top of more lube. Because the bad thing about that, of course, you get this big gunky drivetrain, you're going to start getting mist shifts, it's going to attract loads of additional mud and stuff to it. It's basically up to you to monitor it depending on how often you ride. Now this sort of thing is a really good thing to do post-ride, you don't want to be doing it pre-ride, the idea is you come home from your ride, you clean your bike, you give it a bit of TLC that it needs, lube it and it's ready to go next time you want to go riding. Don't want to be one of those guys at the start of the ride, everyone's waiting for you while you lube your chain, pump up your tyres, change your clippers pedals back on, do it after the ride. Now there you go, that is all you need to know about a quick and efficient way of lubricating and cleaning your drive training transmission. For a couple more helpful videos, click down here if you want to see the deep clean version of this video. That's where I take everything off, do a full clean with heavy duty degreaser and brushes and stuff. You want to do that sort of thing once a year just to make sure everything is running smoothly. Now click up the top here if you want to learn a bit more about the different types of greases that are out there, whether they're suspension greases or lithium greases, and all the different assembly compounds, thread locks and stuff that you might need for assembling and working on your bike. Of course, as always, click on that round globe to subscribe to the channel, tell everyone about us, and of course, if this video was helpful for you, give us a thumbs up.